Is it possible to play games on your 2018 MacBook Air? Well, not exactly as you can see here, but with a little help from an eGPU, it's a night and day difference. Check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, so let's show you how it's done. I have the Razer Core X and the RTX 2080. And again, I'm using the LG Ultra Wide 5K 2K display with a 5120 by 2160 native resolution. I'm also using the Samsung X5 external SSD to store games from Steam because the MacBook Air I'm using, the 2018 base model, has a measly amount of storage. So here's the eGPU all set up. And to control the games, I'm using a standard wireless Xbox controller. So first of all, I want to connect this LG ultra wide display directly to my MacBook Air via Thunderbolt 3. And this is gonna help you to appreciate just how terrible the MacBook Air is when it comes to graphics performance because it has that integrated Intel UHD graphics 617 GPU, which is, as you can see, absolutely horrible for playing games. So these two benchmarks, Heaven Valley 3440 by 1440 quality ultra. So really threw in a lot at this GPU and it's falling down immediately. <laughs> so I connected the SSD, also connected my Xbox controller so that I can play Rocket League. That's not a very graphically intensive game, is it? No, but when you're running at 5120 by 2160 at the highest settings, it will absolutely cripple your MacBook Air and it's going to stutter and just be completely unplayable. So we're gonna start over. We're gonna put an eGPU in the mix. Will it make a difference? Well, you're about to find out. So I've restarted Windows, we're back at our desktop. Now let's look at the Razer Core X. One of the things I love about this GPU is that it has a power switch and that comes in handy for this tutorial. Before we connect the GPU, we're going to connect the SSD that stores or houses all the games that we download from Steam. I found that you want to plug it into the second Thunderbolt 3 port, the one furthest from the display and save the other port for the eGPU. Now, once you've seen that Windows has recognized your SSD, you can go ahead and plug in the eGPU. It allows you to keep the eGPU's Thunderbolt 3 cable connected and just use the power switch to turn the eGPU on or off. So I've just turned it on and Windows has recognized my eGPU setup and you should see a notification telling you that it's setting up a device. That of course is the RTX 2080 graphics card. So I'm gonna open up Windows Update and you can see where it's starting to download those initial drivers for the NVIDIA RTX 2080. See that? So we'll still need to go to NVIDIA's website, download the most current driver and install that, but this will get us started. This will get us on our way. Okay, so the initial installation is complete and it's asking us to restart our Mac. Now, when we restart, you wanna make sure you turn off the eGPU before Windows begins to boot back up. If you don't have a power switch on your eGPU, just unplug the Thunderbolt 3 cable. Once Windows is back up, you can turn the eGPU back on or reconnect the, the Thunderbolt 3 cable. If you don't do it this way, you will run into problems, trust me. So once you're all the way up, you just go into display settings and you can change the preferences. I like to extend my display to the LG ultra wide and also make sure the resolution set to 5120 by 2160 native. All right, so now I'm installing the NVIDIA drivers that I downloaded from NVIDIA's website for the RTX 2080. Just gonna install the graphics driver here. So this gets us the latest and greatest driver so that everything works as smoothly as possible. And this will take a while. I've sped it up as you can see here so we can get through it in a shorter amount of time. And you're not sitting here waiting on me. Thumbs up if you appreciate this video, by the way. And also subscribe if you haven't done so. All right, let's go ahead and click the restart button. And again, same thing. You wanna turn off the eGPU before Windows begins to boot back up or else you'll run into problems booting your machine. Alrighty, so we're almost back up to the desktop. By the way, if you haven't 
installed Windows Boot Camp or you don't know how to do that, make sure you check out our tutorial that shows you how to do so, as that is obviously a prerequisite to you performing this tutorial. Okay, so we're back up. We have all the drivers installed, the latest and greatest. We have our SSD connected with all of our games from Steam that we downloaded. And here in Device Manager, you can see NVIDIA GT, or I'm sorry, RTX 2080. <laughs> all right, so here is the Heaven benchmark, and it is a huge difference from what we saw earlier. No stuttering and lagging or any of that. Frames per second is no longer one or two frames per second. You know, it's up to the hundreds, you know, it looks good. Here's Valley, nice and smooth. Again, here's the, the resolution, 3440 by 1440, which you just saw, and you're still averaging 90 frames per second on a MacBook Air, which is driving an external display. That's pretty impressive, I have to say. Now, before I let you go, I want you to see how Rocket League performs running at 5120 by 2160 at the highest settings you can you can configure. All right, so here we go, Rocket League. It works, folks. It plays super smooth. It looks great. Super high resolution, that excellent looking widescreen view. And we're easily eclipsing 60 frames per second. We're getting anywhere between 80 and 130 frames per second at times, but it stays super smooth. So no, the MacBook Air is not a gaming machine by itself, but with a little help from an external GPU, it's surprisingly good. Obviously, I would not buy a MacBook Air with gaming in mind, but if you already have one and you wanna get more out of it, you wanna play games with it, Apple doesn't recommend it, but it is possible to use an eGPU and game on your MacBook Air. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.